All right, here we are again, back again with all new market reports for the Indianapolis and surrounding suburbs. I am here, I'm joined with Mike Taylor, broker, owner of Red Door Property Management. Mike, how's it going? Are you ready to dig into this? I am ready to dig into this, Chris. The sun is out. I haven't seen the sun in like three weeks, so I am super <laughs> excited. It's a little bit warm. I can't tell you how pumped I am just to see the sun. Yes, not only the sun, but we're also nearing, you know, 50, 55 degree temperatures. It's almost like we're at the beach. Um, uh, yeah, I almost scrubbed this entire video and just headed outside. <laughs> or maybe I should have just done the video from my front lawn. We should have. We should have. <laughs> cool. Well, let's not waste any time. Let's dig into this. Uh, let's let's get into what the people want to want to hear, want to see. They want to know what's going on in the Indianapolis market. And I've got to tell you, just kind of quickly skimming over it a few minutes ago, uh, I'm seeing some really positive things. I'm not going to spoil anything. So we're going to jump in and uh, just stay tuned. I might get excited. I might jump around. <laughs> let's just see how it goes. All right, here we go. Indianapolis market report, January 2024. Let's jump in. Yeah, it does seem like we're seeing some positive trends early in the year. I mean, again, this is January's data, uh, but we get a little sneak peek of February, but it seems like we're getting some positive trends uh, early in the year, which is super, super exciting and super encouraging. We kind of had a weird year last year with pricing and days on the market and stuff like that. So maybe leveling out a little bit this year. Let's let's take a look and find out. Um, jumping right over here to median uh, rental price over time. So uh, this dark blue line here is uh, 2024 data. Again, we're looking at January, we get a little sneak peek in February, so that's the great news. So January did start off a little bit lower than last year. So we're, well, I say a little bit, but four and a half percent over last year, and then just down slightly uh, from December of 2023. So that's that's a pretty, pretty slight decrease. So the average rent in all of Indianapolis, 1307. Uh, the bright spot here is this huge trend up towards February. So I'm really excited to see what happens in February. Um, and in all honesty, that's kind of more of a, you know, what I would consider a normal trend. Last year for Indy was, pretty flat and then it just kind of dove off but um i'm kind of hoping that maybe this year we see uh, something a little bit more normal if i could find my pen here i might draw it but you know this might be more of a normal if it kind of follows like that and then it eventually tapers off in, in december that's kind of a more of a normal thing so i'm hoping in the spring and in the summer we may actually see um uh, prices up year over year kind of what went on and let's let's hope so right let's hope that's exactly what happens uh i suspect you're probably right now it doesn't surprise me the more i think about it to see january's uh median rental price lower than last year we talked all during these previous market reports that we've done the correction right i mean last year this time last year every investor was trying to maximize their rental value trying to achieve what was really almost unachievable right uh, yep. in my opinion looking back um and there was a correction and now yep. things have begun to stabilize so and as we quickly skimmed over these market reports uh i'm, I'm trying to call back here and I, and I can't i think we'll see that same kind of trend even in these other suburban areas that we're going to look at is if we're going to see the median rental price starting out this year uh, lower than they were the previous year and I, I highly believe that that's probably why i mean that's normal it's more normal in the four times before COVID is you would see like the market would kind of die in November and December and then January and February would kind of like come back to life. Right? right. So maybe we're just kind of getting back to more of a normal trend. Investors, like you said, have kind of had that reset. Everybody's kind of come back to earth in terms of uh, in terms of rental price, a little bit more realistic. I mean, obviously, everybody's listening to this this uh, YouTube channel, so you know what's going on. I mean, yeah. everybody's educated. So yeah. um, anyway, I, I, I'm encouraged. Um, the one thing that's a little uh, dicey this month is average days on the market is that 72. Uh, you know, last year, this thing was all over the board. So I'm not sure what to make of this, if it is still that correction or what. Definitely something to keep track of. Uh, I'm going to jump to the next slide just for a second to talk about active homes. We active homes were at 2112. Uh, again, we put together this second set of slides to put some of that into perspective. Let me jump there and I'll jump back here real quick. But um, the second set of slides is will show us inventory. We'll go on this left one here. So active homes over time. Um, you can see fairly steady. It is up year over year. The red line here is uh, is. 2024 um and so we are seeing a little bit of an increase uh over last year that's not super concerning because there's more inventory honestly with 
rates being so high, there's more renters out there right now. So it's not a huge, huge uh, uh, spike that is concerning to me, but it is it is definitely up year over year, although it is down from December. So uh, just something to keep an eye on. It just gives us a little bit of a little bit of data there. Um, and then as I mentioned, days on the market was super erratic in the Indianapolis market last year specifically. I mean, all the way from 43, that was actually the lowest point in the market last year, which just defies all logic. It doesn't make any sense at all. And then we, in June, which is the exact opposite of what you would expect. So exactly. I don't know. We're at 72 here for this month. Uh, we'll keep an eye on it. 72 is not great. You know, this time of the year, I'd like to see it more around like that 30 to 45 days on the market and then trending down, you know, closer to 30 or 25 as we get into spring and summer. So definitely some, something to keep an eye on for sure. Hopefully it's not as erratic and sporadic as it, as it was. Yeah, exactly. And, and a couple things, I'm just gonna jump in here that I wanna mention is number one, uh, I mean, this is the data that you're looking for, right? This is why you're watching these market reports month over month. This is why you're tuning into our YouTube channel. This is why you're, you're dialed into what the market's doing so that number one, when your neighbor's on the market for 72 days, which is the current average in the Indianapolis area, you're ahead of the game. You can you can make the adjustments to your market rates, your market rent, lower it another $50, maybe even $100 to place your tenant over a month sooner than your neighbor and you've already made that money, you have income on the property. Now, if you're not tuning in, you're still trying to achieve this, this massive uh, market rate and you're going to be on the market for you know a couple months a couple months plus and that's that's an absolute mistake in my opinion and then i also want to mention right we have more active homes in the market here in january uh than we did the prior year that that completely makes sense if you're in tune with these market reports you've heard me continually talk about uh investors being driven to invest in real estate not only are we seeing expanding expansion here in the indianapolis area it's in the surrounding suburbs uh, but also what I really love to see is this downtick from uh, active homes on the market from December and then going into January. And then into February, we're going to get a sneak peek into that. It's continuing to downtick some more. I mean, that's, yep. that's awesome. I mean, that, that tells me that the, the, the clientele in the market right now is starting to get a little bit more comfortable. There was a lot of fear going on in the market uh, as we were getting closer to Christmas, right? Nobody knew what was gonna happen in 2024. What's gonna, the market's gonna crash. The stock market's gonna crash. Well, none of that happened, right? So I think there's some comfortability now entering yep. into the market. And I think that's what we're seeing right here, right now. And if that is all the case, I don't think the 72 days on the market is anything to be concerned about. I think that that will inevitably tick down. Well, the trend lines are pointing in the right direction. That's for sure. Inventory is going down as we can see. Uh, average rent most likely going up in February. So the trends are looking good for Indianapolis. And like you said, kind of broader, broader economy. It looks like, like you said, the recession fears have kind of calmed down a little bit. Uh, I think everybody's kind of guessing that Fed's going to ease up on interest rates either later this year or early 2025. So I think everybody's right. feeling a little bit calm, you know, in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's see what happens. Most importantly, stay tuned in. Let's let's see what uh, let's see what happens in February. Absolutely. Then real quick, we'll go over the sales data um, for India, and then we'll jump into the next one. But average sales price for Indianapolis. Again, I know I always say this, but it's just so shockingly affordable here. Two twenty eight one forty is your average home. Uh, that sold again. This is from an invest investor's point of view. So those are homes under five hundred thousand uh, dollars. The sales are heading in the right direction in terms of price. So that's up five percent from last year, up just a little bit, one point three seven percent from uh, last month. So heading in the right direction, but still extremely, extremely, extremely affordable, which makes it super attractive from an investor's point of view, especially from somebody maybe from California, Arizona, Colorado, like anywhere else besides here. That is a, an extremely affordable. Absolutely. Let's let's get into a market where you're spending 230 on a home and your average rates are now ticking up to 1350 in February. I think that's a no-brainer. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, Chris. Well, let's jump into uh, a future market report for January. You usually handle this one. Absolutely. Let's let's go. I'm gonna try to contain myself. All right, everyone was was tuned in last month. It was beginning to concern me about the Fishers market. I'm, I love the Fishers market. Great school system, great quality applicants, low vacancy, low turnover costs in this market. And, but I was I was beginning to get a little bit concerned with the average days on market that just didn't want to calm down. Well, 
let's let let me let me try to avoid getting ahead of myself here. And I've got last month's market report here in front of me, and I'm going to kind of go back and forth here just a little bit. But uh, we're looking at this year in 2024. The January rents are already ticking up. We're looking at an average rent that's ticking up uh, one and a quarter percent from the prior month. We're at 2,000 a month. That's excellent. So average rents are ticking up. And look at our sneak peek getting into February. It's going to tick up even higher. I can't wait till we get into February's report. I'm only hoping that the average days on rent are going to continue in this in this direction. So without further ado, I'm going to jump right down into the average days on market. 37 average days on market. I'm going to retract everything I was saying last month. I'm going to pull back all <laughs> the fear that I was that I was spitting out there and say, look, calm down, calm down. It's fine. Last month we were looking at 60 average days on the market, and and that was down, mind you, from the prior month. That was down 37 percent uh, from from November of 2023. So I mean, that was a down tick, and it was still at 60 average days on the market. Now. We're beginning to calm down a little bit. We're down another 30%. 37 average days on the market is a stellar deal. And if you're tuned into these market reports, I can absolutely guarantee you, you're gonna see an average days on market even less than that, as long as you're listening to the listening to the pointers that we're giving you along the way. So active homes in the market, 102 active homes down a little bit from 112 the prior month. That's, that's awesome. Uh, so that's beginning to cool a little bit. And then I'm just gonna jump right over to the average sales price, which is down. So this is a market you're gonna get, and maybe, just maybe, this is all because of what I was saying, you know, in last month's market report. You know, oh, wait, hold off on the Fisher's market report. So not enough buyers, and I've literally driven the price down five, almost 6% for you. Let's go. It's you personally, it's you and you alone. Personally. <laughs> Let's dive in. Let's get into this market. It's still a great market. It's still expanding. Uh, I don't know how they're continuing to find land to, for this new construction in the Fisher's area, but it's, it's a great market to be a part of. So. Uh, I'm going to eat my words from last month and say that this is this is an excellent uh, market to be a part of. Number of homes sold, 46 homes sold this month, which is down from last month, which was a uh, uh, number of homes sold at 57. Wow, Woo, I got all that out. I couldn't wait to get here, as you can tell. I really like the Fishers market, and I, I'm probably going to have very similar energy as we get into the Noblesville market. Look, you guys, this is not new. You knew this was going to happen. You might, you might even be tuning into this just to see Chris's reaction when we get to the Fishers in Noblesville markets, right? Once you, <laughs> you were a bit of a fair weather fan last month, weren't you? <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. So this is really exciting to me. Uh, I'm really excited to see this. I can't wait to see what happens as we trend into the, the spring months here. So, uh, Mike, if you wouldn't mind, let's let's go over to the next slide here. Active homes, we've quickly covered. This just gives you active homes over time, which is uh, awesome data to have in your arsenal. So print these off, uh, screen screen capture them, whatever you need to do. This is, this is information you need to have. Uh, days on market, there it is, right there in front of you, January 37, which I mentioned this as we were skimming through this at the beginning, but, and I have to mention this right here and right now, 37 days on the market is, is inching very close to its best performance last year. Last year, its best performance was in September, where it had a 23 average days on the market, we're at 37 in January. Look, let's just let's just pray to the to the real estate gods that this continues. Fishers is a market you need to be a part of. Mike, what do you think? <laughs> I love it. I love it. A bit of a 180 from last month. I'll tell you that. I know. I know. I I, I see that and I uh, I, I recognize that. No, uh, but the numbers supported. I mean, like you said, days on the market is so great for January. My goodness, 37 days on the market. Even these active homes, you know, you looked at Indy and there was a, a bit of a gap there uh, between last year and this year. There's almost the same uh, in terms of inventory, which is super encouraging because there's there are more, more renters out there with interest rates being so high. Yep. Um, so to have about the same inventory from 22 to 23, um, or sorry, 23 to 24, geez. Uh, is super encouraging. And you know, the fundamentals of Fishers, it's always a strong market. It's a solid market. We always talk about it. It's good schools, good community. It's just a good solid community, that's all. Yeah, it's a slightly more affordable Carmel, I think, you know? I mean, it's not quite Carmel, I, right? I get it, but it is It is certainly a close comparison in my opinion. Yeah, but I mean, we don't even do Carmel on this because yeah. honestly, for the most part, numbers don't even make sense for investors. Carmel is a great community. I actually live in Carmel, but I'm never gonna invest, not never, but I'm not investing in Carmel because the numbers just don't make sense in terms of the price and then the rental price that you could get. So 
uh, yeah, it's a, it's an affordable caramel, and it's it's a uh, a community that makes sense for investors. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. I think I think enough said. All right, all right. Well, let's leave that with Fishers, and we will jump over to uh, Noblesville. If I remember, you were pretty hot on Noblesville last month. I always am. At least I've been consistent with this one, Mike. All right, consistency <laughs> is key. Now we probably should have added a little separation between these market reports because I'm still on a roll. So here we go. I mean, look at your median rental price. We're much higher than where we were in January of last year. So what I was saying at the beginning of this, when we got into the Indianapolis, is not actually ringing to be true. I mean, we're seeing higher rents in the Noblesville market than we were seeing 12 months ago. And we see the sneak, sneak peek there. We're going to be trending up as we get into February. So, I mean, this is awesome. Active homes in the market is very close to where we were last month. We were at 113. This month, we're at 118. And yet we're still seeing uh, uh, an awesome trend in our median rental prices. Average rents are 1850 right now, down just two, just over two and a half percent. Who cares? I'm not worried about the two and a half percent. I think that's going to leverage, leverage out no problem. I'm not worried about that at all whatsoever. Now, what I am absolutely in tune into is what? Your average days on the market. 32 average days on the market is absolutely stellar, absolutely stellar. Last month, we saw 45 days on the market. So this month we're down 28, nearly 29%. I wasn't even concerned when we were seeing 45 days on the market. I knew it was gonna trend down. I mean, this is consistently seen a very healthy market. And uh, this is a, a price point for an investor that you can absolutely afford. I mean, your average sales price for your investor point of view at 337, is, is up 3%. So not only are you seeing uh, amazing average days on, on market, you're seeing amazing average rent cycles, but you're also seeing an appreciation play here in the Noblesville market as well. And I absolutely expect this trend to continue without a doubt. You're buying in Noblesville, uh, again, lock in your 401ks, take out your loans, you're, you're looking at this market. Yeah, we talked about it last month and, and, and I think we need to talk about it every month, but you know, the markets that we highlight, you know, are also appreciation plays because they're strong markets with good fundamentals. And I mean, a three to 5% appreciation, that really needs to be in your calculation of, of your return on investment. I mean, for example, at 337, a 3% uh, return, that's another $10,000 that you have put in your pocket. I mean, it's, it's equity that maybe you haven't tapped yet because uh, you haven't sold it or refinanced it. But I mean, that's definitely something that needs to go into the equation. And I think that people need to consider that when purchasing a home and where they want to purchase. You know, if you're looking for cash flow, you may want to think about the Indianapolis market because the the, the purchase price is what, $100,000? Yeah. But, you know, on average, I mean, this is a little bit painting with a broad brush. Probably not going to see as much appreciation in Indianapolis as you are in some of these uh what we call donut counties, uh, the surrounding counties of Indianapolis. So it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for the immediate cash flow, maybe you trend towards Indianapolis. If you're looking for safe, stable, and appreciation, you know, some of these Hamilton County or Donut County uh, 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 homes might make a little more sense. Yeah, what a great explanation, exactly. And, and the appreciation play is something that goes overlooked. It's a conversation I'm having with uh, new investors all the time. You just have to bring their awareness. Not only are you looking for a cash flow, and I get it, right? You want your property to cash flow, but you have to factor in your appreciation play, especially in this current market, right? Where yeah. where if you're taking out a loan at six, seven percent and your your purchase price is probably a little bit higher than you uh, I mean, you're buying at the top of the market, more or less. Um, so you, you've got to factor in your appreciation. We're going to continue continue to see appreciation in this market, in the Fishers market, and this goes rings true, in my opinion, for what's on the west side, the Avon, the Brownsburg areas that we also do market reports on. You're going to see appreciation, and I agree. You're, you still are going to see appreciation in the Indianapolis market in general, the actual metro area. Uh, but the suburb areas uh, is, is where your appreciation play is, as well as if you can find a property that is also cash flowing, it's, yep. you're, you're a king, you're a king in this market. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you wanna jump to that next slide at all here? Yeah, let's just take a quick peek here. Uh, you know, this, this again, it's just data that you're gonna wanna have on hand just to trend uh, activity over time. But I mean, this is this is stuff that we've just finished talking about. Your active home is in the market at, uh, at 118. 
we're seeing where we are a sneak peek there into February. We'll see if that continues when we talk about the February market report next next month. Uh, but your act, I mean, it's 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 almost identical to what we were seeing last month, right? I, I said we were at 113 in December, we're at 118 uh, this month. It's just a uh, a safe market, I think, to be a part of. Days on market. 32 days on the market, which is rings almost identical to where we were last month. That's that's our last year, rather. That's that's super interesting to see. And I mean, and I like this. I, I love this graph because, you know, before we put this graph together, I was really just pulling from memory, right? What were we? Yep. What was I feeling here in the Noblesville market? Well, this is exactly what I was feeling. And none of these other uh, days on market reports, uh, the trend over time, are you gonna see something that looks like this? None of those numbers scare me, right? You 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 get a little nervous when you see that 95 up there, but that's a one month fluke at 95. Who knows what was driving that at that time? But I mean, this is a safe market. When you're seeing 44, my goodness, down to 18, at 50, 27. I, I'm not, I'm not afraid of any of those numbers and I can beat every one of those as long as I'm in tune with the data in front of me. Totally agree. Yeah, these days on the market might be, we've never done a side by side, uh, but this might be the healthiest uh, trend of all of the markets that we do. I mean, like you said, there's kind of that one weird month of 95. We had like March, April was just kind of weird in terms of days on the market, but gosh, I mean, everywhere else, I mean, 32, 44, down to 18 yeah. days on the market. I mean, this is, uh, in terms of days on the market, this is maybe one of the healthiest markets that we have. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Noblesville, Noblesville, Noblesville. And then a, a close <laughs> second is a Fisher's market. But Noblesville is where I'm, I'm putting my dollars right now. All right. All right. Well, let's wrap up Noblesville. We'll go to uh, my favorite market, which is Westfield. Uh, I love this market and it just continues to, unlike Chris, I'm not a turncoat and a Fairweather fan on uh, <laughs> Westfield. I was cautious, cautiously optimistic last month and uh, uh, right as rain here, it is, it is producing, it is uh, uh, just still killing it. Um, if we look at rents over time, so we're starting off uh, January of 24, a little bit over January 23, so up 3%. We are down slightly from, from December of 23, but I mean, gosh, look at that sneak peek. I mean, that is just going through the roof in yeah, wow. February. So I cannot wait to see February's numbers. That's going to be awesome. Um, so active homes, 129. We'll get to uh, what that looks like in terms of uh, you know history and uh, compared to other months. But average rent right now for uh, January, 2157. Again, gosh, that's so healthy. Remember looking at that last month, we looked at what, two years ago, and this up five, 600 bucks. I mean, just unbelievable. Yeah. So, uh, and then harping on, you know, what we've been harping on here is average days on the market. I mean, gosh, what a turnaround from last year, 28 days on the market. Uh, this is down 26% from last year, 31% from last month. So, I mean, gosh, it just seems like every market we're talking about is really doing great in days on the market, heading in the right direction in terms of average rent. So, gosh, it's just exciting, exciting times to talk about all these numbers. I mean, January is shaping up, or this spring, I guess, is shaping up like a really positive uh, uh, year for residential real estate. Absolutely. I, I can't, I can't, I couldn't agree more. I mean, you know, we were talking on the front end of this, you know, is this, what are we seeing here? Well, let me first talk about, I don't want to get ahead of myself here. So your average days on market, right? Love average days on market. You're seeing 28 and you're, and you're looking down and you're seeing it well, it's down 31% from December. Well, wow. Well, where was it the prior month? I mean, what does that look like in actual numerics? I mean, that's 41 days on the market, which also doesn't scare me. I'm completely fine with 41 days on the market. Again, I plan on beating that, but 41 days on the market is, is fine. Um, yeah, I think in December, you know, in December is like, that's very good point. Exactly. During the month of uh, the, you know, the biggest holiday of the year, yeah. You're seeing 41. That's that's great. So even even seeing the down 31 percent, that might even make people a little bit nervous. That is absolutely nothing to be nervous about. Uh, and and I think what you were saying earlier about the projection of possible interest rate uh, decreases by the Fed, I think there's just a calmness in the market because otherwise I was trying to attribute this to an early sign of what's coming in the spring. But I think we're just we're too early in the year for that. I mean, we're January. We're talking about January numbers. I think we're too early to be preaching about the seasonality trend of what happens in the springtime. I think that there's just a calmness in the market right now. So the market's just it's just picking up, right? Um, so these these markets that we've been talking about that are really great markets are 
turning out to a, look like stunning market. Absolutely, could not agree more. All right, let's jump over to sales price here real quick. Uh, 374, 701. Again, this is homes under 500,000. That is down slightly from both last month and last year. Nothing huge, but you know, two and a half percent over year over year, and then one and a half percent month over month. Um, there are a ton of those homes available. 60, 60 of those homes transacted in December. So a good amount of inventory at that at that price. Um, let me just jump over here to the uh, uh, active homes and days on the market over time. So, uh, you know, what's interesting is we do see a lot more inventory. We talked about this uh, uh, last month where there's a lot more inventory as compared to the beginning of the year and last year, uh, you know, attributable to probably just so much building out there, so much activity out there, so many people moving out there. So uh, whilst at the face of it, this does look kind of shocking. I mean, you're kind of more than double your inventory. Um, a, it's heading in the right direction in terms of 129 to 107, but B, uh, this is a little bit of a unique market and I don't know any market really like Westfield that's building at the pace that Westfield is building at. I mean, it's my knowledge, I think, I, I don't have any stats for this, just, just knowing the market. Westfield is head and shoulders above everyone else in terms of activity level for building and yeah. influx of people, influx of houses, commercial stuff, I mean, it's just. Yeah, yeah, that's funny that you mentioned that because that's exactly what I was just taking notes here on and I wanted to speak on really quick is that all the space that Westfield has, I mean, right, Not they're building at a faster pace. They have so much more available space right now. I mean, they can, they can expand. Who knows what that is going to look like over the next five, eight, 10 years. My goodness, they have plenty of land, plenty of uh, space to continue a, a, an enormous amount of uh, expansion. So what I wanted to get your thoughts on is what do you think about an appreciation play in Westfield? Not only is this a great area, I think, to have a current investment property in, but wow, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but knowing the expansion that's happening in Westfield and what they're trying to do and what they're accomplishing in Westfield, wow, what, what a potential for an appreciation play, right? Well, I was actually just going to mention that. I mean, so uh, I think of all places, maybe this is your highest potential for appreciation. Yeah. I mean, to me, like you were saying, who cares? Down one and a half percent from last year to two and a half percent from from or from last year. Who cares? I mean, the, the trajectory of Westfield and the prices in Westfield is through the roof. I mean, you look at this, I mean, it's, it's very similar to the rent that we looked at, right? It's up, what, five, six hundred bucks over the last three years. I mean, you look at these prices three years ago. You know, you could get, you could have got a house for 150, 175, that same price, that same house is now selling for 300. Oh uh, so it's just, you know, it's just, it's just going to be through the roof. So, I mean, yes, you want to talk about an appreciation play. Westfield is probably maybe one of your best things we talk about. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's huge. Yeah. I think we'll keep that as a, as a conversation topic as we, as we continue here over months and months and years and years here, but uh, I think absolutely. So, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'll just wrap up Westfield with days on the market. Um, so uh, again, we're we're at 28 days on the market, which is extremely healthy going into January. Uh, could not be more excited about that. Last year, kind of the same as four as everyone else. Had a little bit of a sporadic, a uh, little bit of a sporadic year. Had a, a really crazy month in July, uh, but then it evened out. So overall, it's really healthy. Um, and again, 28 days going into uh, January, super super healthy. So excited about that. Not concerned about days on the market in Westfield at all. Agreed. Agreed. Cool. Well, let's jump into our wild card this uh, this month. Today, uh, or this month, we took a look at the Greenwood real estate market, which I think it's been a couple months since we've looked at that. We've been kind of hot on this market. It's uh, it's a good sub market. This one's to a little bit to the south of Indianapolis, um, but again, kind of staying the same trend. It's a good community, good schools, good fundamentals, um, and those that's what we like to promote with with our rentals is having those good fundamentals because it attracts higher quality tenants. Uh, typically, your rents are going to go up. You're going to have the appreciation play. So. Uh, with that said, Chris, what, what are we looking at for Greenwood this month? Yeah, exactly. Here, I was just trying to pull up my uh, my Noblesville market reports from the, the previous month because I might need to argue that we can we make this more of our and let us know in the comments is Greenwood a, a market area that you're interested in seeing monthly market reports in? Because if you've been in tune with these market reports, uh, I've done the Greenwood markets many many times, and almost every time I've compared it to the Noblesville market. And I'm gonna do almost the same thing here today. And you know, I wish we had more time. I wish we could do every suburb around the Indianapolis market every single month. It's just not reality. So let us know if this is a if this is an area that you want us to be more in tune with. Because 
Uh, every time we do a Greenwood market report, that's kind of the direction I'm pulled in. But again, we, we try to track as much data as we can in the entire Indianapolis uh, and surrounding markets. But anyway, let me let me dive in here. Your median rental price over time. Now, this is one that's going to speak a little bit truer to what we were seeing in the Indianapolis market report, right? We were seeing higher rents in the January uh, of the 2023 than we're seeing this year in 2024. Not overly surprising. Again, I think it's a lot of investors that were late to the market trying to achieve extremely high rents. And then there was a little bit of a correction, which is what uh, we were kind of seeing into the summer and later parts, latter parts of, of last year. But listen, the big numbers that you're gonna wanna stay in tune to that we've continued to preach over and over again is your average days on market. I mean, 34 average days on market when you're looking at an average rent of 1600, which is up a quarter of a percent, but average days on market is 34. This rings true over and over again for the Greenwood market. Your active homes is, is extremely comparable to the Noblesville market. I know I'm kind of going backwards here, but I'm just, the average days on market, maybe we need to flip those because the average days on market is something I'm immediately in tune to. Uh, yeah. And that's that's something that kind of, kind of reflects my entire tone of the market report. But active homes in the area, 128, that's exactly what we're seeing in the Noblesville area. So very comparable uh, market. Your average sales price, now this is even up 4%. So that means that the, in in uh, in December, or rather, excuse me, in, um, yeah, I'm sorry, December of 2023, we were seeing in the 200,000s, the tops of the 200,000s, which is an absolutely amazing entry point uh, for an average rent that's continuing to tick up at 1600. So I like the Greenwood market area. It's hard for me to advocate for it as much as I am about the Noblesville market, but I think it rings a lot of the same attributes that a Noblesville market does. Good school systems, good entry points, good average days on market. And there's a, there's a high interest in the rental clientele uh, in that in that market. So, which brings your average days on market, right? There's there's enough there's enough interest in that market to uh, place tenants quickly. Yeah, agree. Uh, and I think one thing that kind of ties all these together is a couple of things. One is, you know, I look at that, gosh, up almost 5% from last year, 16% from, or sorry, from last month, and then 16% from last year. Now, I will say I did put together that, um, that those numbers, I ran it like four times because I was like, that's an awful lot in one year. Yeah. Uh, there was a bit of a blip in uh, January of 2022. It did have, a, for some reason, a really low month. So I, I think that that's uh, the 16% a little bit misleading. I wouldn't expect that to happen every single year, of course. Um, but, you know, the for me, it is these solid communities that, um, again, have the appreciation play. They're good over the long term. Um, you know, and again, it's kind of like, you know, if you if you need that immediate cash flow, again, maybe look at the Indianapolis market as a more affordable one, but these these other ones that we're talking about kind of have a, a better long-term, I think, return on investment versus, you know, the short-term, you know, six months or one year, or even two years, you know, if you look a long-term investor, which I think is probably the most successful way to look at real estate and rental homes is, you know, have that three to five to 10 to 15 year timeline uh, and that time horizon. And when you start to look at it and in that time frame, you know, your perspective changes a little bit. And so it, it does, it is more about the appreciation. It's about the quality of the tenant. It's about the days on the market. So uh, anyway, I think that's kind of one thing that kind of ties all these together. And I think Greenwood falls right into that. Yeah. And, and as we wrap up this market report, I'm going to kind of shift gears to just a little bit, Mike, because I want your perspective on, on one thing. Uh, I know as, as our short-term rental management program continues to expand, continues to grow, we've had one or two, uh, one or two or three short-term rentals in the Greenwood market. Right. And I talk to new investors and they're like, you know, where am I going to, where am I going to put my dollars? You know, where do you, where do you advise I, I invest in short-term rental? And I, I have to continue to bring up the Greenwood market because and I'm going to rest on, on your expertise because uh, you kind of oversee that, but yep. the Greenwood market surprises us, right? I mean, even in the short-term rental game. I, I'd say especially in the short-term rental game. Uh, yeah. you know, I think when people think about short-term rentals, they kind of hear about all these hot areas, you know, downtown or yeah. uh, uh, Bates Hendricks or uh, Fountain Square. I'm, I'm just here to tell you that those areas, if you're a new investor looking for uh, a short term rental, maybe if you have an existing home there, you could do it. But if you are looking to buy something new, uh, it is especially kind of in that Fountain Square area, it is financially just not going to work. Uh, the price point of what you can get versus there's kind of been a, a, a rush in inventory. So the amount that you can get 
per night and the occupancy that you can expect, it just doesn't make sense to do yeah. as a short term rental. However, you start looking at some of these outlying areas and people don't necessarily think, oh, let me do a short term rental in Greenwood. I mean, <laughs> who's going to go to Greenwood? Well, yeah. you would be surprised. You would uh, be surprised. I mean, there's, uh, I mean, so varied and so crazy from just people visiting their family to, you know, maybe they uh, have some sort of affiliation with a hospital or they're visiting somebody at the hospital. A lot of times we get uh, people with insurance claims, maybe they had a fire at their house. I mean, those ones are great because those are two, three, four, five month rentals. Um, I mean, it is just, it is crazy just the amount of different people that you get wanting to stay in these homes and there's nothing available. There's not very much available in these, yeah. in some of these markets. I mean, we had one out in Avon that crushed it. Um, That's and right. it was, but there's not a lot available. If you put together a nice product and, um, you know, put it in some of these, some of these areas that people don't think about, it, it can definitely surprise you. That's for sure. Yeah, and since I brought up the short-term rentals, and and maybe we kind of need to work some of that conversation in when we're doing yeah. some market reports, it's something we should discuss really quick. But uh, just since I've already brought it up, I'm, I, I kind of picked your brain. I know we've got some other short-term rentals in the in the Fishers area. How are those going? Are those are those taking off now? Uh, and I'm not sure. I'm trying to recall here because I'm just kind of throwing this off the cuff. And what we yeah. might have in the Noblesville area because they're also, I would think. You're going to get a Grand Park play. You're going to get a Woo Off Mortgage Center play on those short-term rentals. Is that is that what you're seeing? Are you seeing any of that even for the Fishers market? Yeah, actually, we just onboarded one in Fishers not too long ago, and it's really taken off. I mean, right now, you know, it's January, February. Uh, it is the slowest time of the year for our market for short-term rentals, right? But uh, we just onboarded one in Fishers, and it's really starting to take off. Um, uh, let me see if we have any nobles. I can't think if we have any nobles bill at the current moment. So I can't speak to you know if we get that Ruoff um, Ruoff crowd in the summer, but I would certainly think so. I mean, it makes yeah. a whole lot of sense. So I would just say yes. I mean, contact us. We can run an analysis for you to see what you know your average nightly rate may be, what your occupancy may be. But uh, I just wouldn't discount some of these suburban markets as not available or not a smart move for. Uh, for Airbnb because they definitely can surprise you and they can definitely make a whole lot of sense uh, to put a home, uh, an Airbnb or a short-term rental in one of these suburban Yeah, yeah. So audience there, uh, I'll tell you, uh, Mike and I will collaborate a little bit. We'll see if we can't put together uh, a little bit of best areas to invest in when you're looking for short-term short -term rental rather. That's a good idea. Indianapolis area. I know that would be hugely helpful because that's exactly where everyone is looking first, right? The, the, the first investor that's looking for investing in a short-term rental, get them, I get them on the phone and they're looking in the downtown area. And I'm just like, I mean, that's fine. That's fine. I'm not saying you want to avoid that altogether, but there's other areas that you should look in. So I know I kind of derailed us a little bit. I think that's some really valuable information though. Uh, and there's a lot of interest, obviously, in the Airbnb and short-term rental market. But um, yeah, that, that'll that wrap up our market reports, I think, here for January 2024. I think overall, really good. If you didn't catch it in the middle of this, uh, in, the, in the middle of this talk, you're looking at Fishers and Noblesville without a doubt. Greenwood as a, as a, as a quick third. Uh, no, Westfield, Westfield number one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> We've all got our horses, right? But no, this is exciting. I would say definitely tune in next month because it looks like we're going to have an exciting spring. Uh, and hopefully an exciting spring and summer for the rental season. It looks like everything is heading in the right direction. So check us out next month. Uh, hopefully we've got really good news to report. Absolutely. We continue to read your guys' feedback. So keep that stuff coming. Let us know other areas that you're interested in. Is there other uh, investments, avenue, avenues that you're, you're interested in in the uh, real estate world? Let us know. We want to be in tune with what you're interested in and keep that content coming. So let us know. Like and subscribe. We will catch you for the February 2024 market report. We'll catch you guys later. All right. See you guys.